Welcome to this week's virtual drasha. This week we have the incredible privilege to be Parsha Shmini, and the Parsha details the moving, exciting, and beautiful consecration of the Mishkan. It was on that eighth day when the official baton of spiritual leadership in the Mishkan transfers over from Moshe to Aaron. As Rashi points out, during the seven days, we'll call seven days of inauguration. So Moshe Rabbeinu essentially acted as the Kohen Gadol, but on day eight, Aaron and his sons are officially fully and totally conscripted into that eternal role as Kohanim. Kohanim who serve as that bridge between HaKadosh Baruch Hu and us, the, the Shluchei HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the messengers or the agents of God, and Shluchei Didon, and the agents, our agents as well, ultimately again connecting both HaKadosh Baruch Hu and Klal Yisrael in a beautiful, loving, and eternal relationship. But of course, a day that was supposed to be marked by so much simcha, by so much happiness, by so much celebration, was marred by a terrible tragedy. The Torah tells us, this is in Perek Yod, chapter 10, verse 1, Pasuk Aleph, Vayichu b'nei Aaron, Noda v'aviu ish machtaso. The two sons of Aaron, Noda v'aviu, each take their machto. Machto is like a fire pan. It was essentially like a small shovel that was held in hand, and you would put coals and kitores and incense on it. They brought their machto, v'aitnu b'ahen ish, they put fire on it, v'ayasimu ala kitores, they put incense on it, and they sacrificed before HaKadosh Baruch Hu, literally translated an alien fire, an alien fire that God did not command them to offer. And the divine repercussion, punishment, justice is swift and intense. A fire came forth from, from before God. And were consumed by a of Hashem, and they died before HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And it's interesting to note that there is an incredible amount, amount of controversy amongst the commentaries, amongst the Mepharshim, about what exactly did Nadav and Avihu do. And interesting, the Kliyakar, the Kliyakar really does like, he's like a digest. He brings them all together and he says, There are so many different opinions as to what Nadav and Avihu did wrong. Some say, They were inebriated, they drank wine. The proof to that is immediately afterwards, Hashem speaks to Aaron and gives the prohibition to drink wine while doing the temple service. Others say that they walked into the Mishkan without washing their hands and feet, which is a prerequisite for temple service. Others say they weren't wearing all of the proper Kohanic vestments. Others say they refused to marry. Nadav and Avi refused to marry and tried to establish a family. Yet others explain that they paskined halacha. They decided matters of Jewish law in the presence of Moshe, who obviously, again, was their senior, not only biologically, right? Not only by age, but ultimately by wisdom. Others say that they would walk around and they would say, when are Moshe and Aaron going to die already? When is this old generational leadership finally going to leave and pave the way for us? Others explain Sha'avana Egel. They died as a result of the sin of the golden calf. And he says, Vichal, he quotes other opinions as well. And the Kliyakar explains something amazing. He says, each of these opinions, they find their own scriptural allusion. They find their own hint within the text. But the Kliyakar says something amazing. He says, at the end of the day, there's a Pashat Pshat. There's a simple understanding in the Pasuk. What's the simple understanding of the Pasuk? Vayakrivu lifnei Hashem eish zara shalotziva Hashem asalotziva osam. On the most basic level, the Kliyakar says, there's a Pashat Pshat. The simple meaning, or the simple, the simple infraction, the simple sin, is they brought an unsanctioned incense offering. They brought kitores that they were not supposed to bring. And the Kliyakar says something amazing. He says, The Kliyakar says, we're going to go with the Pashat Pshat. We're going to go with the simple understanding of the Pasek. It's not wine, and it's not halacha, and it's not Kohanic clothing, and it's not failure to marry. Again, the Pasek tells us, they brought a fire offering, they brought an incense offering that they were not commanded to bring. The only sin they committed is the one mentioned in the Pasek. And I was very taken by this Kliyakar. Even at first glance, again, it doesn't. it's great because it's a digest that brings in everything. I guess I was taken by it because I feel like what the Kliyakar is telling us is not only Pshat, not only a deep an understanding as to why Nadav and Aviyu died, but I think he's giving us a profound window into how to approach our Yiddishkeit. Sometimes we get so caught up in the whys, and sometimes we get so caught up, like, why did this happen? Why did that happen? Looking for deeper meaning, theological understanding, trying to figure out how HaKadosh Baruch Hu runs his world. And maybe what the Kliyakar is saying is, sometimes what you just need to do is lean into it. 
What you just need to do is give yourself over to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. There's a Pasha Pshat. Things happen in this world and often we can't or won't understand the whys of it. There is a deeper meaning to everything that unfolds because the Kaddish Baruch Hu runs a beautiful yet incredibly complex world. There is nothing that is random. There is nothing that is happenstance. There is nothing that is without deeper meaning or deeper purpose. But a lot of times in life, I don't know it. So I could spend all of my time trying to figure out why Kaddish Baruch Hu does this? Why did this happen? Why did that happen? Or I could take what's occurred, embrace it, accept that this is the reality, and lean into it. But what leaning into it means is effectively giving yourself over to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Saying, Ribbono Shal Olam, I love you, and I know that you love me, <laughs> but I do not understand how you run your world. So I'm just going to go with the Pashib Shat. I'm going to understand what I understand, and whatever I don't understand, I'm not going to allow it to sideline me or to handicap me from engaging in personalistic dynamic activity. I'm going to take, I'm going to understand whatever I can, and I'm going to lean into it, I'm going to lose myself in you, give myself over to you, and just push forward and do whatever I can with the circumstances I have in life. And I think that's what's happening over here. The Kliyakar sees everyone. Why did not have an Abiyu die? What happened here? What happened there? They did this, this. Kliyakar's like, stop, stop, stop. The Pusik says what they did. And just lean into it. They did something. They made a mistake. I, you don't understand why this type of mistake warrants this type of reaction. How could it be? Unsanctioned Ketores brings this type of punishment. What could be so bad? They were trying to come close to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Kliyakar says, I got it. You don't understand it. I don't understand it. Let's just go with what we understand, which is Pasha Pshat, simple meaning in the Pasik. Let's accept this reality. Let's give ourselves over to the Rebbe Shalom because the Chalish Baruch Hu runs a beautiful world and we just sometimes need to give ourselves over to him. Shalom, these are the circumstances. This is what it is. Now let's go. Let's go. Let's do, let's accomplish. And let's not lose ourselves in all of the questioning, which is so profound, which is so meaningful. But at the end of the day, doesn't really get us anywhere. And I think when you look at the Pesut, when you look at this episode through that lens, the entire story takes on a totally different dynamic. Right after the death of Nadav and Aviv, what does Moshe do? Vayor Moshe al Aaron. This is Pasuk Kimmel, chapter 10, verse 3. Vayor Moshe al Moshe said to Aaron, Hu asher diber Hashem leimor bikrov vaya kadesh v'yapne kala am achabed vayidom Aaron. Very loaded Pasuk. Moshe turns to Aaron and he says, Ma'oh, Aaron, this is exactly what Hashem spoke about when he said, I will be sanctified by those who are closest to me. And ultimately, again, I will be exalted in front of the entire nation. So Moshe Rabbeinu seems to be saying is, somehow the death of great people brings glory to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And Rashi HaKadosh explains that when people see that even great people are held to such strict standards in the service of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, so of course, what does that mean for the rest of us? Of course, we all have to be careful in our divine service. But perhaps Moshe Rabbeinu was saying something a little bit different. Maybe Moshe Rabbeinu was not trying to give Aaron Nechama. You see, we always look at it that these are words of consolation. That Moshe is essentially saying to Aaron, Aaron, look how holy your children are. Look how holy they are. After all, again, they serve ultimately, again, as the paradigmatic example that no matter how great you are, you have to abide by the rules. You have to serve HaKadosh Baruch within a framework. So he's giving him consolation through the death of Nadav and Aviyu. You see the greatness of Nadav and Aviyu, but maybe that's not what Moshe Rabbeinu is doing. Maybe Moshe Rabbeinu is giving Aaron a strategy as to how to deal with overwhelming life circumstances. Moshe Rabbeinu turns to his brother Aaron and he says, you know, it's in times like this that HaKadosh Baruch Hu says, Bikrovai Akadesh. I don't ever want to give up on my life mission of Akadesh, of sanctifying myself. So how do I do that? How do I continue on the trajectory and the journey of holiness even when life throws me some pretty significant curveballs? And even when tragedy sets in and difficulty and overwhelming circumstances envelop me, what do I do? How do I maintain a lifestyle of Akadesh? I will always be sanctified. And the answer is, Bikrovai, to bring yourself into HaKadosh Baruch Hu, to lean in to God. So often tragedy, tragedy has almost like this natural reaction of distancing us from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. I don't understand it. Why did you do this? And meanwhile, Moshe is telling Aaron, that's not what we do. When there is tragedy, especially tragedy that's overwhelming and we don't understand, lean into it. Give yourself over to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Bikrovai. It's only if you make yourself a person who is considered to be karov, close to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, then HaKadosh, then I will be the kind of person 
who will be steeped in perpetual Kiddusha. That no matter what life throws my way, I am on a trajectory. That, I believe, is the advice that Moshe Rabbeinu was giving his brother. Almost as if he's saying to Aaron, you have to develop a sense of emunah pshuta, a simple belief, not even a complex intellectual belief, not a multi-layered, sophisticated theological construct of why you believe in God and why God runs the world, but almost like a child who gives themselves over into the loving embrace of a parent. I know you love me, and I love you. So when the difficult circumstances in life occur, I'm just leaning into it. Bikrovai, it's only if we're close to HaKadosh Baruch, only if I'm someone who Hashem says, ah, that person is close to me. Akadesh, I will continue on my journey of holiness no matter what life throws my way. These weren't words of Nechama. They are words of life strategy. Aaron's response? V'vayidom Aaron. Aaron was silent. Now the Mepharshim go in many different directions in terms of interpreting Aaron's silence. But the truth is, we know we say in un, un, Unisana Tokef, on Rosh Hashanah, we say, Bishofar Godel Yitaka, ultimately when describing HaKadosh Baruch Hu, when describing, again, taken from the Pasuk and Malachim Aleph, so right, when it describes, Bishofar Godel Yitaka, Vikol Demama Daka Yishama. So there's the great shofar, and then there's the silent sound, the small sound, the Kol Demama Daka. The sound that you could barely hear. And again, like the Pasuk in Malachim says, Achar Ha'ish, there's all this noise after the fire, the Kol de Mamadaka. The Ribono Shal Olam is the Kol de Mamadaka. The Ribono Shal Olam is, is that, that, that lower sound, that more silent sound, the Kol de Mamadaka. Literally, again, Domim is silent. So Kol de Mama means a small, like silent, almost silent sound, Daka. And very almost, almost so easy to miss. It's not so easy to perceive. HaKadosh Baruch Hu is found in the silence. The Ribbon Shalom is not found in the rash, right? He's not found in the shofar gadol. He's not found in the earthquakes. He's not found in the lightning and the thunder. He's found in the silence that often comes after those things. The Ribbon Shalom Olam often exists in the silence. And by Yitom Aaron is Aaron giving himself over to the cold de Mamadaka. Aaron is giving himself over to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Olam. I have to bury my two children. And I don't have the words, and I don't have the strength, and I don't have the understanding. So I'm going to take the advice of my little brother. I'm going to heed the advice of Moshe. And I'm going to go ahead and lean into you. Vayidom Aaron. Aaron was silent. Ultimately, is Aaron a coin leaning into the Kol de Mama Daka? Ultimately, HaKadosh Baruch Hu is found in the silence. The Ribbon Shal Olam is found when you give yourself over to Him. In those moments when it is so easy to be overwhelmed, when it is so easy to be overtaken, and I say, you know what? I'm not going to have the answers. But I give myself over to you, HaKadosh Baruch Hu. That's the Holy of Holies. That's the Kodesh HaKadoshim. So it turns out that this story, which really is a tragic narrative that... Should have been on, right on a day that should have been filled with so much simcha. There was so much loss. But yet it is in these very psukim that HaKadosh Baruch Hu is teaching us how to deal with adversity. How to deal with adversity. Kliyakar Pashipshat. Know when to question and then know when you're questioning is really an exercise in futility because I'm just not going to understand it. And in those moments, just take Pashipshat. And in those moments, recognize that the one thing you can do is to give yourself over to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Moshe says to Aaron, Bikrovai Akadesh. If you want to keep going, if you want a life of Kiddusha, if you want Akadesh, Bikrovai. You have to find a way to be close to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And Aaron, after hearing everything, hearing the Kliyakar, so to speak, hearing Moshe Rabbeinu, Vayidom Aaron. God is found in the silence, the cold de Mamadaka. That's when Aaron Akoin gives himself over to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And the act of giving yourself over doesn't mean that there's no ishtablus, that there's no effort. The act of giving myself over is, of course, I'm going to keep on working, keep on toiling, keep on trying. And by the way, I can still be searching for answers as well. But I'm not going to allow the absence of answers or the trauma or tragedy of life to derail me. Instead, when I encounter those situations that are so overwhelming that I can't understand, I'm going to go with Pashib Shat. I'm going to lean into HaKadosh Baruch Hu. I'm giving myself over to Yibam Shalom. I'm with you. Bikrovai. I'm going to be close because HaKadosh, because I want to continue on. You know, I remember as a young boy, 
I used to learn during the summers with my grandfather, Zichron Levracha, a survivor, and was a, a true role model for me in many ways. And I remember we used to learn Mishnayis, and then I, we'd get to, I was a little boy, I'd get to a question, and I'd ask my, I'd ask my Zayda, why, 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 why is it like this? And he would always give the same answer. He always would say, Shtayt in the Torah. This is what it says in the Torah. And I remember as a kid thinking to myself, he probably just doesn't know the answer. And then as I got older, I realized that this survivor was teaching me the lesson of the Kliyakar, the lesson of Moshe and the lesson of Aaron. There's sometimes that where we think that as we become more evolved or more complex or more, you know, or smarter, we delve into the intellectual underpinnings of everything. But truth is, it's a little bit just the opposite. I think the older I get and the more complex I get, the more simple I want to become. And sometimes the greatest thing you could do in this world is vayid omarum, is shtayt natayra. The greatest thing you could do is lean into HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Ribono Shalom Olam, I don't understand your world and I don't understand what you do, but I'm not going to let that lack of understanding paralyze me. Instead, what am I going to do? Pasha Pshat. Bikrovai Akadesh. I want a, I want a, I want a life of Kedusha. So I'm just going to be whole. I'm going to be attached to you. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to live a life of Vayidom Aaron, a Fadnia Kadosh Baruch in the silence. I'm going to walk around with my questions, but I'm not going to allow those questions or the lack of answers to paralyze me or to define me. I'm going to keep on striving, keep on growing, keep on doing, and waiting for that great day. When Eliyahu HaNavi comes, when Mashiach comes, and we will finally have all of the answers to our personal questions, to our national questions, and may we be Zohar Amir and Sashem to arrive at that great day. Wishing everyone a good Nair Shabbos and a beautiful Shabbos Kodesh.